The hook, the hook will grab you with their psycho blues, the music upheaval of Los Angeles. The hook are heavy, the world, you must get ready. Open your minds, the thunder, the sound of the hook explodes. Hey everybody, welcome back. Psychedelic here. Who would have thought? Another label spotlight video. <laughs> I think it's been two, three years going on that we've done one of these last time. And the other two, I think I've only done two in the past, if I remember correctly. I've only done ABC label and then the mainstream label did like a top 10, top 20 list around there. So today we're going to be kind of analyzing, you know, sort of like a retrospective look at the Uni Records label and primarily of the psychedelic nature because I know there were some things on the label back in the day that were not all psychedelic, but these are kind of, you know, and some of these picks are certainly in the light realm as well, but still made the cut and we're going to be talking about them. So I made a list here in my handy dandy notebook, right? Anyone get that reference? Anyways, uh, yeah, I had to actually have a notepad for this one just to kind of remember all the titles that I wanted to mention. So I didn't list some obscure ones that I don't own, don't really want to own down the road, but they were certainly rock, soul, pop groups of the era that uh, were on the label and associated with it anyways. Then there's some that I uh, have like listed as runner-up, some that I parted with in the past and maybe some that I would never pick up again or ever pick up, yet they're pretty strong titles for what they are. And we're gonna just list off a few here that worth mentioning. So one that I used to have, Mike Millis, or Milius, had a record called Desperado. It's a pretty obscure title, but you can still find it really cheap, like five, 10 bucks, I think. It's got like one killer cut on it, the opening track on side two, but the rest, pretty forgettable. Uh, Magic Sand, but I think it's got some association with like, you know, groups like that were on uni label, like Mud. I think it's like recordings of their of their songs, but like before they even signed to the label. And then it's got like, you know, one killer cut on there, Get Ready to Fly, or whatever it's called. It's uh, been comped several times. It's on the, uh, what is it, the Beyond the Calico Wall compilation. So they just throw all these songs together kind of almost to make like profit off of like sort of the studio project from Muni. It's not really recommended, but it's got an interesting backstory. Jeremiah, again, one of those things. I think it's maybe more blues rock oriented. Got a cool looking cover, but never really ventured finding it or uh, picking it up. Uh, Vigris Osborne, kind of a singer songwriter thing. I remember having being some good pop cuts on there. Uh, Mars Bonfire, uh, a lot of covers on that album, if I recall correctly. Nothing really worth note noteworthy, but it's certainly interesting. And like I mentioned prior, a uh, couple albums from the band Mud. Uh, they have two really disgusting looking covers. The one is like the band members all covered in mud, and then just a big foot, really big, ugly big foot in mud. <laughs> it's like. I think it's kind of more like boogie rock, biker, blues rock oriented. Same goes for the band Smoke, which also had two LPs. I used to have their one album. It's pretty good for what it is. It's like I said, kind of biker, boogie rock. Uh, I think they were from Texas as well. It's Charity, Charity Now. It's one I've never owned. I think it's a little more, again, kind of a mishmash of things, kind of soul oriented, blue eyed soul, a lot of pop moves. But yet at the same time, kind of forgettable. Uh, the Cascades made it on the label. I used to have the record. Uh, I forget what it's called, but I think it's the last record they made in the 60s, perhaps. And they're, you know, of course, the Cascades of Rhythm of the Rain. Uh, Giant Crab, also no noteworthy. Another kind of blue-eyed soul band. Kind of a mixture of, like, 
blue-eyed soul, kind of flourishing with like acid rock passages throughout. Um, also, a couple records I've never owned, but you know, if I saw them for five bucks, I might check them out. But I don't remember them leaving a lasting impression on me, but that's just me. And I should mention too, you know, this top 10 list is just basically my personal take on it. So don't feel like, you know, don't be offended if it didn't make the cut or anything. It's just like my personal, what I think is like the meat and potatoes, the strength of the label. The runner up titles before we get to the top 10, Fields, another one and done record on uni. It's pretty sloppy record. It's got a couple great moments. The first track's really good. And it's got a whole sidelong cut that it doesn't really go anywhere. It doesn't go places. Yellow Pages, uh, what's it called? Volume One it was the only volume they had. Again, another record I used to have, but you can still find that for like 10 bucks all day long. And it's got some killer tracks on it. A very spotty listen. Uh, when they start doing the blues thing, they do a version of I'm a Man. And probably one of the worst drum solos in history is on that record. Um, it's recommended picking it up for those tracks, but not those tracks, but like the heavier cuts, the two of us, and maybe a folk track here and there. Devil Woman's a good blues rock tune. Uh, Rainy Days, I used to have that one, that Al Capuco Gold. Again, I think some of their singles were actually stronger than the LP itself. They had some non-LP tracks on singles. Uh, but In the Force of My Mind, of course, is a killer highlight. Up Through the Spiral, used to have that record. I showed that not too long ago. Again, I think they're also based from Texas. Pretty strong hard rock, uh, especially on the second side. And then, might be a little controversial not putting this in the top 10, but um, I did revisit this before I made this video, and I was like, am I sure I want to leave this off the list? And uh, I kind of want to. So it's the Druids of Stonehenge, their album Creation. Never owned the record and it's kind of notoriously the most collectible on the label for reasons I don't really understand, but it's again, try, it's kind of a knockoff of like mixture of Stones and Chocolate Watch Band. And although it does have some killer cuts on there, I don't need to hear I Put a Spell on You again, or like, you know, some of those blues tunes they go through and what's that song? It's like, hey, 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 I'm talking about speed. It's like, I don't think you're talking about speed because I'm about to fall asleep here. <laughs> you know, so it's got moments like that, but it's got some cool cuts on side too. There's like a Stooges like track on there, I forget, but in some moodier pieces, but not enough strength for me to put on the list. That's just me though. However, with that said, oh yeah, as you can see, there's some uni records behind me. I wonder if they're going to make the cut. Uh, those did not. But if you can think of all the other ones in your head. They probably made this list. We're gonna dive into them. So there are two on the list that I no longer have, but I still, you know, they left an impression on me so much that, you know, I probably would pick them up again if I saw them. I've parted with them in the past, you know, flipped them for something else I've wanted, and they went to better homes, I think. But like I said, I'll pick them up down the road again. However, uh, number 10 spot, I no longer have this one, so it's the Pleasure Fair. It's kind of more of a sunshine pop, vocal pop driven, very light on the pop psych. Uh, features a member who would later go on to Bread, uh, like a year or two after. And it's pretty strong. I remember a um, few, few tracks. I can't remember the titles offhand, but I remember it being a very brief listen, but very strong for the sunshine pop you know, kind of groups. It's kind of like the art of loving but just, uh, again, more of a lighter, light-hearted kind of tinge to it. Very flowery, uh, very breezy, pleasant pop. It's worth uh, checking out, so. The Pleasure of Fair beats Druids of Stonehenge. I know, <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, number nine, uh, this is one I also parted with, the Orange Colored Skies, or Orange Colored Sky. I think it's Sky. Uh, also, again, another very not really psychedelic at all, very much a sunshine pop effort, sort of like the association, but a little more sunshiny in the way of like kind of California sounding. It's got a very kind of coastal sunshine pop vein to it. Um, 
Very good though. Um, I think there's some horn oriented tracks, but very good pop. I mean, it's very good for the commercial market and definitely a stronger release, I believe, on the Uni label. So with that said, uh, this is number eight spot and this is one I do own. Uh, for the rest, the remainder of this list, these are the records I own. And this one made number eight for me. I decided to choose American Blues, do their thing. Yeah, they got signed to the Uni label on their second record. Obviously, this is Dusty Hill and Frank Beard before ZZ Top. Uh, I got a pretty good deal on this one back in the day. I think for like 25, 30 bucks around there. It's pretty good shape and this one's pretty strong. I might almost prefer this than their first record. Uh, I mean, that's got some of their best cuts, but this is kind of more like a folk rock effort, not so much bluesy as the name might suggest. American Blues. They got some great like Hammond organ. I mean, there's one blues cut on here, but it's a really good cut. Uh, what's the track? Coming Back Home. Just Plain Jane is probably my favorite off of here. Kind of reminds me of Love in Spots. And of course, here's the Notorious Uni label with that kind of swirly effect going on. I need to get a t-shirt of that down the road of like just Uni Records and have it all swirling on my torso. <laughs> but yeah, this is, a, this is a cool piece, man. Doesn't get talked about enough. You know, pretty heavy in spots and like I said, they do remind me of Love and uh, maybe some Buffalo Springfield here and there, but with that kind of Texas tinge to it, really good. Uh, number seven. So I, I put this a little low on the list perhaps for some people, but again, my personal take, yours might be on the top five, but this is the Lollipop Shop. Just color, definitely one of the better graphics for the label. This is kind of one that I want to get put on a t-shirt too down the road. It's just a great cover art there. Um, again, this is probably up there as far as like one of the more obscure titles, ones that have really gone up in value. Got a great deal on this um, some years ago on Instagram. I'll get a shot of the label here too because it is kind of neat. And this one does notoriously have some bootleg copies out there, but this one is not. And so I don't remember what the indicators are for checking that, but I think it has something to do with like, you know, made in the USA printed on the back or something. Something really, some minute detail. But yeah, um, this, uh, speaking of love, man, this is like love's punkier brother. A little more snotty in the vocals. And of course this features Fred Cole, who would later be of uh, Dead Moon. And some amazing guitar work on here. Underground Railroad. Um, the steam lets off a little bit. You know, some of the songs kind of sound the same after a while, but overall, a very good, solid effort coming off of here. Again, kind of a very much a garage punk vibe. Um, some great tracks on here. You Must Be a Witch, of course, is like their big track. And then uh, what's the other big one on side two? It's my favorite. I think it's it's Making It. I think that's the other one I like. Okay, at the number six spot, I decided to put this one in the bunch. This is Hooked. I think this is the second album from The Hook. And then of course the first album, The Hook, The Hook Will Grab You. I'm gonna feature a little clip. Uh, they were featured in a movie. I don't remember which movie it's called, but um, our buddy Bruce out there, he comments a lot. He um, uploaded that on YouTube. However, uh, even though the first one's really good, it's kind of more of a blues psych, kind of a funkier vibe. This one gets a little more sophisticated, I think, and overall, I think I much prefer this one. Um, nice clean disc on this. Get a little heavier in spots, a little more progressive, you could say, and a little more diversity in their sound compared to the first one. And love that cover there. And the boys kind of seeping in the shadows. Um, those outfits, man. <laughs> great, great look to the to the boys in the band. I think these guys also started out kind of like a soul direction. That's probably why they got the uni contract, perhaps. But yeah, they do reprise the track Son of Fantasy, part two. It's a more of extended, kind of a heavier 
uh, rendition of that track. But I remember my favorite being there's magic in the air. It's got some like nice flute, if I remember correctly. It's been a while since I listened to this, but I do remember this being quite strong, the impression it left on me. So ranks a little higher in the list. Okay, number five, keep rolling along here. Uh, again, another very famous title, but for good reasons. Fever Tree, this is their self-titled debut. This is the original on Uni. This has been repressed many times. It's got their kind of minor hit, you could say, San Francisco Girls, Return of the Native. Although a very good song, uh, there's some tracks that very much surpass that one. This all the way through is just such a consistently awesome blend of like, you know, kind of a pop psych feel, but it's just got this kind of rugged, heavier edge to it that I really appreciate, especially on the first side. Uh, filigree and Shadow, I remember kind of having like a Doors-like vibe. It's got kind of a Morrison type of approach to his timber in his voice. Man Who Paints the Pictures, got some great kind of upbeat soloing going on. Uh, again, another one that I kind of need to revisit, but this is a very good title for the Uni label to display. So, again, another Texas group. Awesome cover art there. I used to have their second album, Another Lifetime, Another Day. I think that's a pretty weak album in, in my opinion. It's very, it doesn't really have a distinct style. To me, it kind of feels like they're kind of filling the gap of their, whatever it was, 3LP contract <laughs> that they uh, signed on the uni with. Uh, as well as Creation, not too crazy about that record, but it's got its moments, but you can rest assured their first one has the goods. Okay, number four, narrowing down. Gee, I wonder where Strawberry Alarm Clock's at on the list. Don't know, maybe they're not on here. Anyways, uh, the unwritten works of Jeffrey, etc. Whistler, Chauncer, Detroit, and Green Hill. Number four, I thought this was appropriate. It's kind of one of the better titles in my opinion. It's a promo copy. This one's kind of getting harder to reach as, as the years go on, it seems. Um, it's kind of pushing up in around 40 to 80 bucks area. Uh, again, this is one that's very varied in styles, but mostly uh, kind of a rural psych sound. Um, kind of lighter on the psych, more of a rural tinge. Um, and they do kind of use like some bluesy chords, but in a very like shuffling, kind of strutful way. And I really enjoy that. Uh, my favorite track might be Tribute to Sundance. I featured that in a video mix, you know, maybe a couple years ago, but uh, Ready to Move. It's got great harmonies working with that, some real stingy guitar licks going on. Kind of an unusual writing style too. Uh, and these guys would later form into Space Opera on the Epic label. And um, so you get some of those kind of precursor sounds, you know, kind of moving up more progressive direction with the uh, structure of the writing, but very good rural, you know, sort of cosmic country release. Okay, number three. Oh boy. Here they made it at number three. Strawberry Alarm Clock. Uh, for me, I think they're the best band on the label as far as like the psychedelic scene goes, man. They just, uh, they're just so much more than a one hit wonder band. I always say that, but I mean it. And now realizing that, I probably should have worn my Strawberry Alarm Clock t-shirt for the Uni Records video, but too late now, can't turn back time. <laughs> Unless you're on the Strawberry Alarm Clock time. That was a, a terrible joke. Anyways, through and through, this is a, this is a great listen, man. Like, I can't even think of one weak moment except for maybe like, you know, past time with Sack, Strawberry Alarm Clock, and the uh, closing track, Unwind with the Clock. But of course, The World's on Fire, Birds in My Tree, Flip Side of Incense and Peppermints, Strawberries Mean Love, Paxton's Backstreet Carnival, Rainy Day Mushroom Pillow, does it get any better than that? No way, man. Uh, featuring Ed King, who would go on to 
Leonard Skinner, the rest is history. It's uh, like pretty much a five star record in my book. Now, throwing this one in, this is kind of the one that I would really advocate people checking out. And I've boasted about this one many times in the past, but have not shown it in you know a few years now. To me, this is a strong release on the label. East Side Kids, The Tiger and the Lamb. You can still find this one for about 15 bucks on average, maybe in VG Plus shape. Now, it's got a very, again, an eclectic kind of sound to it. The writing style is all over the map. But once you listen to this a few times, kind of sink into it, figure out what they're all about. It's got a lot of different connections to like bands like Euphoria, um, what other band? Uh, Hamilton Streetcar, a lot of those kind of Californian type efforts. But um, yeah, very, very good in style. So it's kind of like a pop psych sound. It's almost more of like a progressive pop, perhaps. But definitely some interesting studio trickery going on. You got these like kind of wailing backward guitar licks on different tracks. Um, and the vocalist has got a very dominant, dominating voice um, on this one. Um, and I, I did actually ask the producer of this one. I think it's Daniel Moore. Yeah, Dan Moore. He sort of arranged some of the tracks with Buzz Clifford. I mentioned him on the Hampton Streetcar record. And he was telling me about these sessions, and he said that there was moments where the whole band was just lit one night, and... You can definitely feel that kind of lethargic energy in the room when you uh, give this a spin. Uh, the only problem with this LP, it's almost too long, so the fidelity on this record is not very good, so you have to kind of turn the volume up, which may have hurt this record a little bit, but yeah, the track ICIM, I mentioned that on the streetcar record. They do a version on here, which is pretty good. Uh, the most psychedelic uh, rendition on here probably dancing in the street they do like an eight minute version it's pretty wild you got a lot of like tape effects interwoven between the different takes they were doing of the track and they kind of blend it all together in this sort of like swirling effect it's really good but I'd have to say my favorite tracks are Pigeon of LA uh, let's see is my love strong I mean I really don't have one week moment on here except for maybe like the country tune which is like second to last track they do one ask the box it's not really that great and the track heavy love kind of has like maybe some beatlesque vibes to it but yeah the whole thing's on youtube i've uploaded a hd transfer of this on my other page cosmic minds years ago so if you guys want to check it out um I kind of boosted the levels so it's not so quiet like the other upload was and um, highly recommend it. Let me know what you guys think of that one. And I'm kind of cheating here but how could you how could you go wrong with cheating with some strawberry alarm clock at number one? Gotta put them there. <laughs> uh, I used to have two copies of this. This one's getting pretty obscure nowadays. I mean you'll see it occasionally but it's always beat to hell as far as the other ones go the world in the seashell and good morning starshine you know they're about on the same level as this one you know kind of getting sought after and people are really getting turned on to this one there's not one weak moment on here it's just consistently the most strong i think it's maybe their strongest effort even though my personal favorite might be incense and peppermints this is pretty much their baby right here uh, even with their hit tomorrow, it's pretty good, like really light sunshine pop. But opening with Nightmare of Percussion, uh, Curse of the Witches, Sit with the Guru, pretty song from Psych Out. I mean, come on. <laughs> this has got the goods, man. And talk about the probably the best sleeve art, too, to boot with that. So, yeah, can't go wrong here. Uh, after this one, you know, they made some. I think the management was kind of sneaking in, making them do different things, but you know, still pretty, pretty much top tier when it comes to um, the mixing job and you know 
their whole trajectory, where they're coming from, really works on this. So that is my top 10 of the uni label. So hope you guys enjoyed. You will probably have some, uh, you know, discussions in the chat about what, uh, what I'm wrong about. <laughs> Not putting Stonehenge on there, but, um, you know, even if I spot an original of that for like a hundred bucks, maybe I'd pick it up but I don't think it would last very long. You know, stylistically, it's not even really my thing because I never even, you know, kept my chocolate watch band record no way out. I'm just not too much of a fan of like the band itself. I kind of like more of the session players when they actually literally do psychedelic work on their LPs, but that's just me being silly. So thanks for watching. Don't know how many of these we're going to do in the future, but I was just kind of thinking to myself, you know, it'd be nice to kind of do a theme based video, get some ideas flowing and see what you guys think of that. So well, thanks for tuning in and we shall see you down the road. This is the hook. This is the hook. Available at your local record shop on the uni label. The hook will grab you. At the hook on uni. Big call of home. Merging reality. And people can just where we said. With fantasy. Big call of home. The hook on uni. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Hook, hook, hook. Even in the country. You are about to be involved people in a total so world. Funky. On the uni label. So Available at your local record store. The hook is about to grab you. Whoa, whoa, whoa.